Well, hello. Um, my name is Jess Andu, and thank you for joining me here at uh, J and Beyond. I'm very excited to work with the Joomla community, uh, and I'm here to give a presentation on IE six. Um, rest in peace, send send flowers. Um, so. You know, uh, we're going to talk about a few things here, and it's just not going to be about I6 and the countdown and how you can help, but uh, we're going to talk a little bit about modern browsers and the IE bet on HTML5 and how we're seeing this with the modern browsers going forward. And where do we go from here? So how do we look forward? So that's basically what my day is going to look like, or my session is going to look like at least. Um, you probably saw a little bit on the sort of hubbub around IE sunsetting. Uh, people wanted to just basically say stop using IE, uh, and that's a, a lot of things were going on in the web. We saw IE gravestones. There was a funeral, uh, a comic like this from the from the guys at Rob uh, Rob Cottingham in Canada, and uh, it's kind of cute. Uh, we're dancing on IE's grave, and guess what? Microsoft sent flowers. Uh, at least the IE team did. So we're quite uh, quite quite happy to see IE move on since we've had IE7, IE8, and now IE9 out there. And I'd like to share a little bit about uh, what we're doing to help with uh, IE6 adoption, um, uh, you know, tracking where the IE6 adoption is. So we have a website, it's the Internet Explorer 6 Countdown website, and um, it gives you a kind of a status of where things are, and I will open up the live site right now so you can see what's going on uh, today, and I had a, the latest screenshot as of yesterday, and now we see it's at 11.4% penetration around the world. Well, we want to get it down to zero, so you can help us. So please come over and look at this site and figure out how you'd like to participate. So we want you to join the cause, educate others, and tell your friends. And if you look at the countries you're at, um, we have Folks in uh, India, you're at 11.2 percent, or I should say 11. Point, what was it right now? 11.296 percent in India. We want to get that down to zero. So help us. Yeah. Uh, tell people, see, hey, there's newer versions of IE out there, and even other browsers, Firefox, Chrome, use them because IE6 is a 10-year-old browser. And it's 10 years old, and the, the specs are only at the 10 year old specs. So, whatever you see working on the IE, and I'm going to talk about the roadmap going forward on how we want to track the HTML, uh, HTML uh, specification in general. So, in this case, uh, we have um, you know, basically a color code, and where you can see we have some problems here, right? Here we have China, and we have India still having a very, very high penetration. And wherever it's darker, it's getting good. Green is awesome. So I think Finland is telling me they're almost at 0% right now. But we're still seeing some Finnish folks, maybe in internet cafes or kiosks out there. We're still having old computers. Uh, we're using, uh, we're getting it at, uh, uh, you know, we're still having a little bit of there out there. But Scandinavia is doing really, really good. Um, and of course, there are other countries out there on track. So South Africa, Saudi Arabia, if you can see that, uh, Japan, uh, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Vietnam, all on track to go there. Places like Singapore, Australia, doing really, really well. So kind of a good picture. So if you are building a, a web applications out there and you want to kind of say, how much do I support IE6 features going forward? And to, I know the Joomla community with templating and stuff like that are still doing bar DOM uh, document objects yeah. that are uh, you know, basically at, at that level of picking up IE6. Yeah. We'd like to not worry about it in certain countries, but you know, if you yeah, do have nice. customers in those other areas, think about talking to them about yeah. getting this down there. And the website is available at www.ie6countdown.com and uh, that's a good place to go. Now, oops, we have, and that's my, where I go back to my slideshow, oops, a little bit of a technical problem here, there we go. So what develop, what are we doing now about what we've heard around IE? and what we should be doing as browser vendors ourselves. 
The first one is uh, we want to developers. They say we want to see interoperability and same markup working everywhere. So when you write an HTML tag, it should work on every browser that you have out there. We want to see performance, right? We want to see things like faster JavaScript and GPU powered graphics, so that you're really using the clients effectively, or the desktops you're using, or the devices you're using more effectively. And we want the websites to not be just like websites. We want them to be applications, and more like native applications really use things like the user interface, uh, use the hardware features, and this kind of ties in with the performance stuff, right? And the other stuff that are here, and these are the big four that we hear, there's more out there, safe and trusted browsing. And we have a commitment to make sure that, you know, things like controls, browser helper projects, plugins, and binding behaviors are not an essential part of your application. They should, if you do choose to use them, they should be additional items that you think about. But for your website, for its 80% or its core features, you might say, shouldn't have this dependency. And that's why we're betting on the next new standards. So, the next standard coming is approaching HTML5. So, HTML5, I just want to put a few things, massive undertaking. There's about more than 50 specs out there, and more specs are being added as we go. Um, they are not all specifications are site ready. What do we mean by that? When we see a site is not, uh, when something is not site ready, it's in using something that may be a premature specification, something that isn't completely baked and may be volatile, and in the case today, changing quite often. Developers find features that might not work, or how they're implementing it have platform issues, certain OS's may work, may not work as well with them. That's all, that's all very important to think about when you're adopting a premature specification. There are also site-breaking changes from one release to next. So if a specification changes on you and you're depending on it, and the newest, latest version of browser update comes over to your desktop users, it could break your site. And we have a lot of examples that actually do that, and I hope I get to show you one. Um, and then there's incompatible in implementations across browsers. And I think this is a language problem. Standards are written in natural English. And when you write things in English, there's room for interpretation. Yeah. And also, some ways, there might be philosophical methods on how they approach those things. So the implementation of one browser vendor and another browser vendor, they may not necessarily have the same thought process when they're writing their code, and things will look different. So that's one of the reasons why you start seeing incompatible implementations across the browser. And hopefully uh, my uh, site will click. There we go. The next one is, uh, and next point here I want to say is, as Microsoft's approach, there's two main components. Provide implementation for site ready, that means things that are in mature implementations of the specification, or mature specification implementations, and provide platform previews for in-development specs. And I'll talk a little bit about how we're, we're doing this. So in a high view, site ready HTML5, working with developers, really understanding what they've asked from us, like I said before, investing on interoperability. Making sure what we're doing works with everyone, with different te technologies. If you're building heterogeneous uh, in, uh, solutions across multiple different um, services and different websites, you'll really need them to all work with each other. And innovate with emerging standards, and we'll, I'll be talking a little bit about how we do that. So, going forward, I want to talk a little bit about that 50 or so specs. At a high level, it looks a little bit like a sky, uh, uh, a cityscape, you might say. There are a bunch of skyscrapers. Uh, I wouldn't say don't use the hype of the skyscrapers to see how much uh, the specs are, but roughly it's about around this much, right? So HTML has the most. And that's the other thing about HTML5. It's not one set of specifications. It's many specifications. And even things like CSS and SVG that you may think are different standards are actually being encompassed by HTML5. 
So uh, HTML5 is this broad, loose term that is being used to umbrella all of these things you see. And each of these specs may not necessarily reside in one community or one foundation or one spec specification or standard body. I think the high is in IETF, ECMA has ECMAScript, which is JavaScript, HTML itself comes out of W3C, and so does, uh, so the, uh, so does things like uh, web performance and web apps, out of different working groups. So there are a bunch of composite stuff that makes up the spec. I said 50 per oh, oh, more, now we're at 100 plus, of course. And that maybe that's a, something I should uh, change. Now, here's sort of the red, yellow, green traffic lights of where things are in maturity. The closer to the my left, your right, it's a mature spec. When it's here, it's probably a, a very mature spec, and we just had a working draft, and people are starting to implement it. Working draft, they're starting to implement more. And at last call, they should be feature complete. So we want to say maturity starts around here, right? Somewhere around here, and there might be even things that will change that. Now, um, HTML5, we're trying to ready, ready it for last call this May. And I'm hoping that actually is where we're at, because what last call means that maturity is coming in the spec. And hopefully what's locked up in the W3C level will be what all browsers use, and all browsers implement going forward. Uh, there's another view of it. Um, same thing, we see a lot of colors there, a little bit more specs. And uh, I would like to give you a demo of IE and HTML5. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to a website. Oops. And uh, the website I have is um, Beauty of the Web. And this is a great uh, site for you if you're using Internet Explorer 9. Now, the first thing the site does is if you're using Internet Explorer 9, it says thank you for downloading Internet Explorer 9. If you're in an earlier version of IE, uh, you'll see uh, 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 you'll see, you know, another message coming out saying, please upgrade, please download this site, because this site doesn't, isn't useful unless you're using uh, IE9 in a modern browser, actually. So, um, I'd like to show you one of these really great uh, uh, sort of um, uh, demos that are available. And while I'm at it, I think we might see something here, as I saw it coming out which is the world's biggest Pac-Man Pac site. So, as this is loading and our internet is coming up, actually now it's on the site, the world's biggest Pac-Man.com is the website. This is a gigantic site and you can log in and play socially with lots and lots of players at the same time. And uh, this is all about so now I can like say basically play for fun, I'm not going Facebook connected. But you can basically take your Facebook ID, bring it down here. And this was created with, uh, with the help of now. And what's really cool is if you, you now go into your browser, you can actually watch me as one of the guys playing this in real time. And you can watch a whole bunch of players. Now, I haven't played Pac-Man since I was a kid. I used to be really good at this, whoops. And you notice, it's, you, if you play it right now, any of you guys, I may see your character show up. And guess what? This is pretty rich, isn't it? Very animated. All this couldn't be done in i6. There are lots of hacks to get it done, but this is just using straight markup. No plugins, no special features, no flash. I better go get a ghost. Alright, and my right, I'll close this close this down. And let's uh, let's give you another demo actually while I'm at it. I think it was the Foursquare Playground. And this is another example of a site that uses HTML5 in IE9 to um, kind of tell you right now how many people are checking in around you, but not through the Foursquare standard static, you know, check-in stream method, which you're going to have to go to the Foursquare site. Uh, let's wait for 
the website to use my physical location. So that's geolocation right now, one of the specs in HTML5 that allows you to see where you are. We located you, we're in Kirkar, at least they got, they got that right. Did I pronounce that correctly for the Dutch guy, Kirkar? Yeah? Um, so I'm here and I can do things like zoom out. And I can find things that are around me that I can check in at. Now this is not a real view physical location, this is just four squareable sites that are around me. You can see where things are, etc. And I'm kind of surprised that I'm the only person checked in around here. There's someone at one. That's me. That's you? Yeah. Here now, one person. I can also see one. So. And who's this person? Secret person, logging to see who I am. That's what it says for me. Okay, so let me go and uh, zoom out. That's kind of See, these little animations are all going, and this is using canvas tabs. And that's in the HTML5 specs. Um, why did I log in? I know I have a, a way of logging in here a little better. Oh, I know one way of doing it. Let's just bring it back up. Holy cow. Four square playground. I allow my for my site. <laughs> and he's saying hi to you. Yeah, and he's saying hi to me. Well, that's a little uh, abbreviation of what you might say when I see you. So now I can find my friends or people I know who are around me uh, who are related and showing up there. Now let's go back to the presentation. Uh, where am I? So, um, so I showed you these two demos. Beautyofthewed.com is a great site for you to go check out, and you can see very, very many uh, similar demos like this. Now, moving the web, uh, web forward, we want to show progress. We just don't want to show activity that we have just you know released another browser version with another few set of features. We want to show that uh, we are we are moving big, big rocks with the HTML5 uh, approach. And we're moving it like with emerging web technologies being adopted. We're going to use, we are going to be making our, our web experience competitive with native applications. So just how we can write Windows apps or uh, know, a specific OS app, uh, we want that experience and richness and snappiness to work. We want to make sure it's hardware accelerated. That's one of the beauties of IE is it, it has access to the Windows uh, operating system and all the hardware acceleration that comes with it. We want to make sure it's site ready. Again, mature standards are being used, uh, not just things that are in emerging standards mode, even though we will adopt them also. We want to make sure that the markup that you write is compatible across browsers, or you might say interoperable in a sense. We will be using web standards, and we will be engaging community as we're moving forward, and for that, we will be supporting by releasing quick, uh, a good cadence of platform previews. And I'll talk a little bit about our IE10 platform preview as we go forward. So hopefully you see us that we're moving big things out there. Now, the standards and community in large has asked for specific things for IE9. And this was something we heard last year, and, uh, and we got that out there. Start using HTML5, we have inline SVG, we have parsing rules, XHTML support, selection AP5, SVG 1.1, we have full support for that, CSS3, 
uh, as CSS tree, uh, CSS tree we get blocks, we are using selectors, namespaces, etc. DOM, you know, ability to use events, styling, range, a very solid implementation of ECMAScript 262, which we all know as JavaScript today, and make it fast. Make sure that it's running with the fastest way you can, you can get it out there uh, to work. And uh, of course, with graphics and for, uh, uh, fonts, we want to support all of the different standards that people have come to rely on the web for. Things like JPEG, TIFF, etc., and make sure that it's always there in our browsers. With the community, they said, please give us platform previews. Uh, we had a cadence of eight weeks before with the platform previews that we had for I9. We'll be moving that to a 10 to 12 week cadence uh, because we, we heard that we were releasing too many platform previews too close together, and it didn't give us enough time to see as things matured. So now the cadence has gone to about 10 to 12, but still, you will still get platform previews. Uh, from us. And I'll talk a little bit about the i10 platform preview that we just got. Now, uh, we want to make sure that there's a community forum for folks to, uh, to give feedback. And uh, that's what we, hear, what we heard is they want to have more open feedback. And we're seeing that at the W3C level, and we're blogging on the i side, and we're also accepting stuff. And W3C participation for us has become a very, very important thing. We are um, we're supporting the uh, W3C in, in making sure that anything we do is W3C uh, reliant. And uh, also to, co to basically contribute our test suites back to the W3C. And that's what IE has done with all the tests that we use. So um, that's what, one of the things that we heard. And with IE9, the, 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 the stuff that you saw before, all of these things here are, um, are, being, are, being, ex are being supported. So, um, so on the standard side and the community side, we have now uh, more open feedback with a uh, program with HTML5 Labs. Uh, we are supporting cameras, as you saw just now, audio, video, semantic tags, geolocation, as you saw from the Forks core demo, um, and then of course, you know, things like 2D transforms, web IDL, they're all there, including new web fonts, web open font format. Now, same at markup and emerging W3 standards. For us to be site uh, ready, we have this new web open font format. Um, and on the edge HTML5 lab side, all these new uh, or very iterative uh, specifications as they get developed are being put on a site we call HTML5 labs, which I'll show you in a bit. And uh, those current specs that we have is index DB, web sockets, file API, media capture APIs. And I have one more to announce uh, today. Uh, which, um, which I will kind of show you right next, uh, which is in the HTML5 lab site. So the four out there, and now we have um, another one. So before I go to the site, I'm going to talk about one of these uh, current specifications that's already been out there, uh, which is the WebSocket site. Um, it's a good example because I have a really good demo for you to show. The whole, com the whole web has, has moved to become real-time. People want to have their websites be interactive. I want to not see static content. I want it to be dynamic. And it's really, really hard to do. Dynamic, as you probably know today, to do dynamic websites that are rich and snappy, it's really, really difficult to program. And we've been doing things like long polling and tricks in, in the Ajax side to keep, so, uh, to keep, so, uh, to keep, to keep the connections open. And it's, it's really, really difficult to do. And if you look at the existing polling mechanisms today, um, you either go about and quickly and always poll from your client to the server to get a response. And if you look at Twitter, for example, you see five new t tweets come up. And every time the client is going out there and saying, hey, do you have something new for me? Do you have something new for me? And there are different tricks to kind of say surface how, how some new update has happened. Right? Uh, the websites just don't work in real time. And the other one is you keep your connections open for a long, long time. And that also has a server um, sort of performance issue. It's always, it's not just getting a, a get in a post, it's keeping a, a, you know, a post open for a long time. So, so it's, you know, it's not the ideal way. These two techniques are nice, but they're not ideal. What we rather do is to have 
a connection that seems open all the time and dynamic. And uh, we want it to be bi-directional, so it's not just one way back all the time. It's going, you know, two ways at any given time. Uh, it's using one TCP socket, not a bunch of sockets open, right? It's, um, you know, it's in and out of the browser um, at all times. Uh, and for the most important thing, it has performance, it's simple to program, and uh, it saves bandwidth. And on the internet, we know with latency and issues like that, bandwidth is a really precious commodity. And of course, it scales. So the web socket specification lives in two places. The WebSockets protocol high by working group, one of those HTML5 specs, lives in the IETF. And the API is, sits in the web application working group in the W3C. So I would like to give you a demo of WebSockets. And uh, I have a really cool demo here. And hopefully, we can see if the internet will play with us nicely. And here's my demo. I'm going to just reset it. Sorry. I'm going to log in as my nickname, Jazzan, which happens to be my Twitter handle. And I have Marcel in the crowd who's going to play a game of Jigsaw with me. And if you look, at any time now, I'm dragging these things. Marcel, Marcel, are you dragging some stuff for me? Cool. All this is not pulling. It seems very real time, doesn't it? Oops, it's still there. And as long as our internet is playing nice with this, Okay, we've got to move things around. Where's the ego? There. Come on, Marcel, can you help me? <laughs> oh, that's corner. See, this is really taxing. Okay, you got pawn. Marcel beat me. <laughs> so, so, so that was pretty snappy, wasn't it? Yeah, the internet connection was a little bit slow here, and we were struggling to get our pieces moving and contending it. But you get the picture. It was a pretty dynamic site. Something you couldn't do in straight HTML on campus before, or any of the socket connections and long pulling Ajax that we did, without doing some real, really heavy lifting. With this, if you go to the HTML5 lab site and you look at the web sockets, uh, uh, the web socket specification, you'll find how you can program this very easily. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about web sockets. All of these web sockets have been updated like crazy. There's been a draft and things have changed. And then if you look down there, the first implemented browsers in January 2010 were Chrome and Safari. Then after that, a whole bunch of other folks had a breaking change in version 0.76, and then they put that out there. And then it was really weird. There was a security issue identified, and these two guys dropped out. <laughs> and what we've done is in our labs, we said, we're not going to put it in the browser. We're going to make them plugins to i9. And we're just going to keep them as prototypes that you can add. And as things change, we keep up with them. And you drop up one plugin and you put the other. And you always have an updated version. So you don't have to depend on the browser to update. You just get plugins you need. And that's our strategy going forward. If anything is a volatile spec, as I say, or things are, are not mature enough, and things are rapidly changing, we're going to prototype them. And we're going to make that accessible to you as code to use it. And I think the best way to describe this whole process is this video that Marcel has uh, recommended I show, uh, which is the whoops, which is the web socket. Uh, there we go. Do I have it in a browser somewhere? Oh no, it goes. I lost it. Let's see that. Let's try it again. My presentation will uh, behave. Favorite bar, I have it somewhere. Boom. How are we doing in time? Pretty good? I have a great idea. I am going to build a site. 
I am really excited about it. We are the first to implement the WebSockets. Starting in the Google Chrome release 4.249, WebSockets are available and enabled by default. So, what is it? WebSockets are TCP for the web, a next generation of directional communication technology for web applications. We are the first to implement the WebSockets. Great. I'll just use them to build my new site. WebSockets specification was just updated to 75. What does that mean? WebSockets specification was just updated to 76. WebSockets specification was just updated to 77. Why are you telling me this? Developers should be aware that starting from Chrome 6.414, the client will talk to a server using 76 version of the protocol, so it will fail to open WebSocket based on 75 version. Sheet. My site just broke. Since 75 version of the protocol is obsolete and no longer supported, you need to update the server implementation. Okay, so I just rewrote my site to the WebSocket 76. WebSocket specification was just updated to 78. WebSockets was just updated to 79. We are making great progress. Oh my fucking god. Important update. We've decided to disable support for WebSockets in Firefox 4, starting with Vena 8 due to a protocol level security issue. You must be shitting me. WebSockets is no longer supported. Have you heard about the Index TV? Bye. <laughs> so, keeping so keeping track keeping track of specifications is hard. And as browser vendors ourselves, oops, uh, as browser vendors ourselves, uh, if I can get back to my uh, presentation somewhere today, uh, here we go. As you see, this was the story. As a user, how do you know what to use? Right? Don't you want to depend on your browser to have something stable enough for you to use and develop? Because your development cycle might not be as fast as all the community members who are implementing stuff on the browsers really quickly or the vendors themselves. It's quite difficult. So what we've taken is the strategy with HTML5 Labs of providing you a stable browser that has most of the features and allowing you to update things that are you know, moving very quickly in another way, which is HTML5 Labs. So um, I want to show you another, uh, another API that we just announced yesterday. Uh, and I wasn't sure, but so I saw my slides and have them in the way earlier, uh, when they were going to release this, and we agreed to release it yesterday. And so now we have the file API prototype. So what is that? Basically, it's a draft specification. Again, this is not a mature specification. This is a new specification that you are going to be, um, you know, seeing a lot of change and churn on. And it's about what, using file objects locally in your web app. And we are going to support a programmatic way for accessing the data of those files and file objects. The standard sits the web applications working group in the W3C. And uh, you know, if you want to know, if you want to see it, I won't click on spec right now, but you can see where the spec actually lives. In, oh, why not? Um, it'll live in the W3C itself. So we are not implementing this by ourselves. We're actually getting this from the W3C Web Apps Working Group. And the specification sits in a W3C doc. Um, I apologize. I think I still have a video running in the background. There we go. It's coming up there. And here's the file at the end. And as you notice, it's an editor's draft. Remember I talked about the cadence there, about a full stable draft or a last call's draft? This is a non a stable draft here. So it's going to be basically changing. And it's there. And we're going to implement, as this API changes in the W3C, we will have an implementation for you on HTML5 Labs. So, so will it be like a developer channel where you, know, you can get the i9 which works with the 
latest <coughs> So, so what do you do is, uh, so the question was, is there going to be an ID9 update that gets me uh, yeah. the latest version? Actually, no, that's not what we want to do. We want to keep ID9 stable. Yeah. What right. is released is released. So yeah. what you would do is instead you would go to, um, let me go back to the browser, HTML5labs.com. Oh, okay. And you would go down to the file API specification, right? We have that over there now, or file API okay. uh, lab prototype. And you'll find the info, you download the prototype for your browser at the time. Okay, so if so this changes, you go just yeah, yeah. Upload, so, upload. So it's just a development version with that. Exactly. API. And the documentation and the code is all here. So you can actually see this is the JavaScript on how you pick up stuff. So var, file selector, get file selector. Then you put a you know, file selector list, and you basically just go and iterate through them, so, just like you would in regular JavaScript. So, is there a way to download uh, IE say, i nine version which has all of the HTML five implemented? Current version. version. Yeah, rather than uh, a new prototype. I mean, I'm not not a current version. Mm -hmm. For the, for this uh, example, you are downloading one for the file API, but for all the APIs that Microsoft has implemented in the labs, maybe a labs version. Which, is, which doesn't affect your stable version, but a labs version, which has everything, rather than just the specific API. Unfortunately not. To okay. the question you asked of whether there's an IE9 version of the latest API uh -huh. plugins yeah. and all that, we're keeping IE9 stable. Okay. What'll happen is you'll just plug it in every time. Okay, so, it's so there's no one in. full oh. distro. Oh, oh, oh. It'll be an IE plugin, oh, okay. and you basically will just update the plugin. So right. IE9 will stay stable. Okay. However, we have IE10, which I'm yeah. going to talk about soon. Okay. And IE10 will keep track of where it is at that snapshot in time. Okay. And again, anything iterated on top of that, you would put on top of IE10. Oh, okay. So if you're thinking of what you want to do, yeah. like what I'm hearing you say you're doing, actually you download the latest platform preview of IE10 okay. to right. see what Microsoft has done as a stable thing. Oh, okay. Got it. So that's how we're doing it. IE9 is already shipped. Yeah. It's not going to change. Yeah. Okay. AP, the plugins may change. Yeah. But IE9 is going to stay stable. Change. Because there's a lot of people out there who have to deploy to thousands of users. Absolutely. And they want to keep that stable, yeah. right? So, um, so what we're going to do, and, and by the way, so here's there's tabs for documentation, right? So you see the docs, and you know it's nice and rich, right? Or you can actually, and then there's you know basically the prototype the specification, the links I showed you just now, right? What the system requirements you need, blah blah blah, they're all there. And then here's where we go to the next step, right? Um, <coughs> Just go back to the slide I was at. This is where we're down. You've just segued the right question for me. As we go forward, we just announced an early look at IE 10. So today we have, um, whoops, we have a, 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 a first platform preview. We did this first with IE 9. If you notice, before IE 9 release, there were platform previews for you to check out what we were going to release soon. So just think of them as alphas and betas uh, of that. And then, of course, the platform previews are more like alphas, and then there was a beta okay. of IE9. Then there would be other platform previews. Right. And the interesting thing is, and I'm going to demo this now for you, is platform previews sit side by side with your current shipping version. So this, you notice there's no shell, there's no chrome, just the render. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, there's no address bar, so what you have to do is you have to go and open the file, or save a file, right? And um, and you know they they kept it this way because they want to keep this clean and small. And I want to show you something very cool. Uh, and hopefully, I want to I want us to join our friend Chrome and our friend Mozilla Firefox to all join us. And I'm going to use this handy feature that we have in Windows Seven. Uh, maybe, there we go, That's, there's Chrome, and uh, I'll just close my window to that. Um, and we'll just watch these two browsers since I can put them side by side. So I have the same site open in Chrome and the IE10 platform preview. I love this fishbowl benchmark because it'll kind of tell you what those things are doing. They're kind of squished right now. Did you see how fast they're running? Maybe I should, you know what I'll do is actually, I'll do this. I'll shut down 
I E and we run it. And oh, I haven't even hit the benchmark yet, so let's do that. And let's watch. No. Oh. That's I E ten hardware acceleration right there. That's, that's pretty good. Okay, that's Chrome right now. And you can see the layers we went with it. So you can actually go and say, all right, no, long, let's boost this guy up to 100. All right? No. I can remove layers. You see all the, uh, the functionality that I'm doing and the frame. Right? And as I put in those things. So in other words, actually, the frame actually looks like this huge water thing. And as I tell a canvas to do its magic, it cuts it out. Seeing is believing, right? And these things are not... Can you just do that, do the same thing on Chrome? This is Chrome right now. Uh, this no, is on the right hand side. I mean, just oh, configure it. Oh, you want to see what happens when I like turn off the FPS side, the frame extreme is uh, up there. No, really, just uh, get up the fish to 100. Oh, you want to put the fish to 100? And I just want to see... Oh, why not? I don't know if my machine will crash. Okay. Yeah. Can you see the fish swimming? Yep. Really slow. They look like they've just had lunch, like us. Yeah. <laughs> right. Those other guys are swimming along. So, how, and I'm not saying there's anything special here, except that we are using hardware acceleration. We're using the GPU. This is the bet we have on HTML5 yeah. to make it like the native app. Right. So I'm going to shut them down because they do use their CPU and GPU. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're not the CPU as much as the GPU is running right there. Um, and let's get back to, oops, I skipped along. Apologize for that. Now, uh, if you want to find out where new things are going to come, we have a developers conference coming, and you can actually watch it online. Just mark the date, September 13th to 16th in Anaheim, California. Uh, you, if you go to Microsoft.com, uh, slash events, you'll see it up there, um, and and uh, and you you'll see some more updates. Uh, it's typically up there. Now, what we saw there, like right, the performance, the visual thing, we had CSS3 being heavily used here. CSS3 has not five lines, right? Um, we had multi-camera layout, the grid layouts, ECMAScript 5 strict mode. This is JavaScript, right? We're using true ECMAScript 5 specification. We're not doing any fancy JavaScript libraries that extended that you're pulling down to do magic, which is hard, right? Today you need to bring yeah. all these plugins, these new libraries to do all this magic. This is actually built in. Yeah. Okay? So and sure. will be built in as we go forward. Okay. And you saw gradients as we saw the colors out there and all that stuff, right? All fancy stuff that was hard to do yeah. unless you knew how to write CSS. Absolutely. And uh, we saw the platform preview just announced, right? And oh, by the way, this is the site to go, ietestdrive.com. The demos that you saw just now were all at ietestdrive.com. And so what's next? What we want you to do, here's my call to action for all of you. Take advantage of IE9 today. Actually, I should say uh, additionally, please don't use IE6 anymore, <laughs> right? Try and tell your customers, hey, use a new browser. Hopefully IE10, IE9, yeah. right? That's where you are at stable. Now, if you want to experiment, and you want to know with experiment with IE, we have a HTML5 lab for you. Yeah. And we'll make sure we give you the best we can as we track the standard. If things break, we're going to revert. If they come, or as things you know, change in the spec, we'll revert. Yeah. If things move forward, we'll forward, move forward. And uh, of course, take an early look at IE10 and our next platform period, because we'll just show you more magic as we go forward, just like that fish demo just now. Now, um, I want to plug in uh, some other demos, and actually, while I'm at it, Grace will not be presenting this. Why did I not remove this? This will be me. <laughs> in real time. And uh, please join us in room one on Saturday. One of our partners, Sudi uh, from Muduku, will be showing uh, basically how Joomla 1.6 now supports multi -data, data, uh, databases. And now we're very, very lucky to have SQL Server as part of that story. 
Uh, and we'll be having a discussion about how we work with the Joomla community. And hopefully, we will have you join us to share how we should be going forward in the Joomla community. And with that, I want to give you some resources that are available, just a snapshot of all the things you saw. Um, Open at Microsoft is one of the Twitter channels from the Interoperability and Open Source team, which is a team I belong in. And if you were talking about HTML5 Labs, you want to see where the new yesterday file API feature uh, just showed up? That's a Twitter handle. It's easier to consume than maybe the blog RSS. And um, that's my Twitter. Please, uh, please follow me, and I will follow you back. Do you have any questions? All right. I think yeah, we had it interactive. We had a lot of questions. Uh, that's that's great. And with that, I want to thank you very much. And thank you very much for having me be a part of the community event here. And I look forward to having lots of great discussions in the halls up there in the park. And uh, thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing you again. Bye bye.